Call this public meeting to order. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, individual, with liberty and justice for all. Please remain standing for a moment of silent reflection for, the, for our servicemen and women throughout the world, and also for those who have passed away in our community. Roll call, please. Mr. King? Here. Mr. Schuster? Present. Dr. Rothschild? Here. Mr. McAndrew? Present. Mr. Dunningham? Here. Please dispense with the reading of the minutes. Third order, 3A, minutes of the Scranton-Lackawanna Health and Welfare Authority meeting held March 17, 2022. 3B, overtime review for all departments as provided by city controller dated June 23, 2022 for the period January through June 2022. 3C, agenda for the zoning hearing board public hearing to be held on Wednesday, June 29, 2022. 3D, Correspondence dated June 24th, 2022, from Mayor Page Cognetti regarding Department of Public Works management changes. Are there any comments on any third order items? If not, received and filed. Do any council members have any announcements at this time? Mr. Voldemort. Fourth order, citizens participation. First on the list is Joan Hodewanitz. Joan Hodewanitz, Scranton. Um, any change in the status of the union contract negotiations? Negotiations are still ongoing. Yeah, I'll remind you that uh, Uffberg's contract expired on March 31st. They were the only um, organization to put in a bid for the new contract, and um, we're getting kind of late in the game. You only have four more meetings before your recess. We're now on day 179, 49% of the year is behind us. Speaking of the year, what is the status of the 2021 audit? We, so, uh Kelly Lindsley from uh, Kohansky has been in touch with the administration and they're going to be in the building this week um, for that for the mm -hmm. end of June. Well, they're only 28 status. days, 28 days late by the home rule charter. And they said now that they're going to have a product for us by September 30th. So I'll be watching. Um, speaking of things owed to us, uh, back on June 6th, um, the city received a letter from Lazor and McGovern with reference to the payroll preparation tax. They had some questions about the status of taxing the self-employed and net rental income. Um, has the administration uh, gotten any response to that that it can share with the public? It's my understanding that a meeting is being set up and then that that information will be shared with the public. Okay, if you get anything in writing, please make sure that gets into third order because um, wasn't the grace period through June 30th before people are expected to start paying that tax, so. Yes. That's around the corner. Oh, and I could not believe it. There is a machine at the pocket park making little pieces of concrete out of big pieces of concrete. 
So that, I think that's the first activity there in well over a year. So progress is being made, so however as, slow. As soon as those pieces are small enough, they're going to be taken out of Yep. There. Okay. Um, item 5B, the uh, HUD Annual Action Plan. Um, my only question was, I saw that it was, you know, uh, for a period beginning on January 1st, is there some reason why this is six months later? I mean, we just do that like that every year? So so we got into this rotation, I believe, starting last year. Mm -hmm. Normally, we would award this in November, but then the money wouldn't come from um, HUD until the following October. Okay. So instead of awarding money and having people, at, like organizations, have to wait a year for it, we pushed it and it doesn't affect the HUD funding okay, that's whatsoever. Fine. It's just as long as we weren't caught surprised by this. Um, and um, I saw the article in the paper about the walkability study. I wasn't able to go to the uh, presentation last night because I had a board meeting. Um, but I've been living downtown Scranton since 1999 and I haven't had a car since 2012. So. I am a bona fide pedestrian downtown. And I don't have an issue with the concept of the walkability study per se. However, I will say this. There are some long-standing problems uh, with regard to downtown pedestrians and city pedestrians all over that need to be addressed and not forgotten. Uh, for example, I think you know it's nice that we're looking at bike lanes for downtown Scranton. But we also have systemic problems throughout the city and the neighborhoods. For example, there are a lot of streets where there's foliage and bushes and trees and people have to walk in the street. Uh, and a lot of people do have to walk for whatever reason, maybe to catch a bus. Um, the downtown traffic signals need a lot of adjustment because I, as a pedestrian, I push that button, nothing happens, you know? So you, you have to guess and just dart across the street. In the winter time, when we do have snow or ice, um, a lot of the plows just push it to the curbs, which becomes an issue for anybody with a walker or a motorized chair. And there are a lot of people like that living downtown. And the other thing is, I don't like bicycles coming up behind me on a sidewalk. And anybody creams me is going to get sued with their pants off. Thank you. Thank you. Next on the list is John Thomas. Evening Council, John Thomas, lifelong city resident. Well, I'm here about the same thing. I hate coming back because you have more important things to do. I, last Friday afternoon, I went to City Hall. I told the man there why I was there about the noise at Little's Bar. He wrote down a piece of paper at 9 o'clock that they're supposed to stop. I went to Lowell's bar at 1 o'clock in the afternoon. You can't get in the front, it's closed. They're fixing up however you go around the back and it's, and it's open. And they serve uh, lunches and drinks. I gave the paper to the man and the owner working at the bar. And he looked at it and he said, 11 o'clock and I, uh, it's two hours over. I said I was fine with that. He said, okay. I was ready to walk out. And he said, wait a minute. I came back. I, I'm this far. I had to lean up against the bar because I only can stand for five minutes. And the stool was too high. He says, I'll play music for as long as I want. And at 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock, 
Five o'clock in the morning if I want to. I said, you can't get away with it. I wasn't going to argue with this man. I, I don't have the strength. He's 45 years younger than me. So I walked out, I went back to my apartment. As I told you last week, my apartment's a three minute walk to the back of the bar. I, I, I don't know what to do in this situation. I, I feel him up against the brick wall and I'm not gonna win. I, excuse me. Uh, I felt uh, that man bullied me and belittled me. I'm not backing down. I, I only hope this city can do something about it. I wanna thank you for your efforts consideration of my poor counsel and you have a nice and safe occasion in the evening that's all thank you mr thomas we we did forward your complaint from last week onto the police department and also code enforcement um i don't believe we've received this response yet have we mr voldenberg not as yet sir so but we'll we'll follow up again I tomorrow will follow up. and see if we get yeah. anything back from them okay they were clo closed last night but sunday night they stopped at two o'clock in the morning. Uh, thank okay. you for your consideration. Next on the list is Ron Elman. Good evening, Council. I didn't even want to come tonight. I thought I'd give everybody a break. But then I read this ridiculous article about a walk around downtown for $240,000. What are you people thinking, whether it's federal money or not? I never heard of such a ridiculous waste of money. How many people have ever come before council and said they want streets changed and don't like the way the sidewalks are? They need help walking around the city. It's, you get these out-of-towners want to come in here and change everything like Biden Street. That's from an out-of-towner. Now we got some out-of-towners telling us how to maneuver around the city. Where I live on the North Main Avenue, there's 115-year-old slate sidewalks and no sidewalks in places right on North Main. Why don't you take some money and fix them? No, I don't expect nobody from, the, from this city for North Main. It all goes downtown for a bunch of developers and LLCs that do their utmost not to pay their share of taxes. I don't know, it, it, it's, it just gets worse and worse in this city for a taxpayer. I talk to people that are just they know they're going to suffer like the Dickens when the reassessment comes, but I bet you it doesn't affect downtown any. They'll be having lawyers or somebody take care of their reassessment. Walk around downtown. Cars pay the taxes to be on the street, not bicycles and not people. They don't need to be a path for people anywhere except sidewalks. It's time this council grew up and started thinking about the people that pay for everything. Well, you know, the, these out-of-towners come here, it's like somebody writing a book about Elvis Presley that never met him. They don't know the people in this city and they don't know the streets and, and they don't even know downtown that they want to change. But well, that's enough giving you guys the dickens, I guess. Now I want to say something good. Every single day I go take my little puppy, summer and winter, up to Western Park and walk around the old swimming pool and around the park. He has a little route he follows around the trees. When you come in, the pool's on your right. There's a huge parking lot on your left. Are, are you familiar? 
why can't you guys take some of this $240,000 federal money and make tennis courts down there? You can't find lifeguards. It wouldn't take any lifeguards to have a tennis court. Three or four of them would fit in there. It's about half the size of a football field. And there's lights there. I don't know if you ever noticed, there's, there's big, big spotlights all around there. I think there's four of them or six of them. It wouldn't even be necessarily for young people. It'd be for everybody. It, I don't think there's any tennis courts in town. I don't know. I was told there wasn't. Anyway, I'm sorry I was so infuriated, but I'm sick and tired of people from out of town coming in here and dictating our lives. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Elman. Next on the list, Lee Morgan. Good evening, Council. Lee Morgan. Well, you know, I listened to Ron speak tonight and the speaker before me, and the city has a lot of obstacles in front of it. I think the University of Scranton, though, gave the city $100,000 to put lights up in the park that, that was going to take the place of the Southside Sports Complex about a decade or so ago. Um, there's no doubt that our city's in a lot of trouble. Um, I don't think that the young people seem to realize that someday they're going to inherit this city. There's a bridge on Southwester Avenue that has both sides of it closed to pedestrians to walk when you leave the exit for uh, McNicholas Plaza. This city, real, people really need to rewrite the charter in this city. And the residents really need to come forward and hear what needs to be changed. Now, for me to stand here in five minutes and explain to people how we can turn this city around, it's not possible. It would take a couple hours because I've only been coming to council since I'm in my mid-20s. The same thing when I opposed construction of the new school because of where it was. And you saw what happened to Central High School. We've had a terrible group of leaders in the city for decades. You know, I've never badmouthed anybody from this council podium except the President of the United States. This president is the worst president in our history. And I'm really ashamed to say that we've named anything after that man. And now we find out that he was mixed up right in the deals with his son that's right on the laptop. And I, I just find it not to be humorous, but to be really so petty for a government to run rudshaw over its citizens and name something after somebody because he's a Democrat and he's corrupt. And you know, Scranton's had its share of corruption. We just lost a mayor, but he didn't get charged for what happened to the Scranton Parking Authority and, a lot of, and the Scranton Sewer Authority. And there's no, never any, ever been any real discussion about what happened to the Reserve Fund and how it got reinvested into the sewer authority. So what I'm saying to people here today is, we need to really sit down and talk about this city. Now, as I've stated here before, my father was a master carpenter, so I know how to do cement work when I was a kid, and I knew how to build a lot of things. I didn't know what it was called. My father would just say, come here, I'm going to show you something. This is what we're going to do. And that's the way it went. But a lot of us in the city went to school night school to learn how to put curbs and sidewalks in the city. I think Mayor Hickey was the mayor. He killed the whole program. This city to have beautiful sidewalks in it now. We've had a lack of vision of a, few, of a city here for a long time. There's a lot of people that have been making a lot of very bad decisions here. Um, you know, taking a look at the taxes and you know, doing all that stuff on the county level is just a complete waste of time because the residents of the city can't pay any more tax. And the money that was sent here to stand the city up has been squandered and wasted. You know, I hope I'd have the opportunity to speak to the residents of this city over an extended period of time. 
and tell them how we can turn this city around. And people should look at what I said when I ran for council seats. I never really campaigned for those seats, but I knew the direction to go in. And when I ran for state representative, I explained to people how to get rid of property tax. It's unbelievable that we have all these people we've elected, and I'm only a truck driver who spent my whole life in, in studying government. And I can stand in a room with anybody, no matter where they come to from, whether it's the legislature or anywhere, and talk about government. We aren't dumb, we're not uneducated, okay? And we know what we think, and we know why we think it. And life teaches a lot of lessons. It's just a shame that we elect people who think they know things, but they never attended a public meeting in their life. And look at the Scranton School District. It needs to be re reorganized immediately. And we need to start educating our children like with the education I received as a child. Thank you. Thank you. Next on the list, Bob Bullis. Evening Council, Bob Bola, Scranton. First off, uh, I'd like to say something about East Mountain where they're paving. They paved all around the whole mountain, yet they left one stretch by the dam on East Mountain Lake. A couple hundred feet they could have paved from there to Derby, and it's all holes and bumps, and they should be uh, brought back over there to finish the paved job, because it didn't make any sense. Everything else is paved. The other part of it is I'm going to reiterate a little what Lee said. You people and the mayor allowed Biden signs to go up all over. You took our voice away. Mr. Donahue, uh, Gahan, the rest of you were the leaders here. You took our voice away to hear what we had to say, whether we agreed putting Biden's name up. The man is an absolute fool and he's making an ass out of us worldwide. And every one of you, could you stand here and say you're proud of him? What he's accomplishing? I don't think so because he hasn't accomplished a thing. In our industry, the transportation, he's burying us. Shut fuel off. You're paying the price to run those trucks down the road because of his incompetence. Yet you still won't take the signs down, put it on the November election, and let us decide what the hell we want in our city. Not for your political goals or your political person. It makes no sense why we suffer. Thousands of cars going in on Interstate 81. See those signs. They can put signs up Scranton, next exit, just like they do Troop, Dunmore, and everywhere else. We don't need Biden's name on the interstate. You want to keep them in the city here, make fools all of us, that's your choice. Because I'm sure when election time comes around, we're going to make a lot of changes. And you guys all see it coming. The other part of this that uh, just per, I don't even know how to put it in words. The mayor stood out here with a bunch of people about AR-15s. I don't think she knows what the hell an AR-15 is or a sidearm. We have a police officer sitting right here. They see him carrying an AR-15. He carries the sidearm, generally a Glock with 14 rounds. You don't need an AR-15 to murder children or people in a mall or anywhere else because it's all close proximity. You can do all your shooting right in here without an AR-15. It's called security and common sense and use your darn brains to protect our people. And it's not from an AR-15, it's from anybody carrying a weapon into that building. All those people in Texas that stood down, all the police officers, should be immediately fired because the story is when you put a gun and a badge on, it's to protect and serve. They didn't do a damn thing to protect those kids and two teachers. That's what's wrong with the system. So if you're going to talk about weapons, get an understanding what a weapon really is and what it can do. You don't need an AR-15. AR-15 don't kill, it's mad, sick people that do the shooting. And they can do anything they want with any type of weapon. And that's where we gotta step our security to our people in this community. And educate better builders and people that our places are secured, especially for our kids. Because they have no defense. 
And every one of those people out there should be fired and never allowed to carry a weapon or protect anybody because they are a part of killing these kids. It was just, uh, I can't put it in words what I saw there and other places. And here in the city, you took Nayog Park. I filed suits to stop the park, Nayog Park wreck from doing anything with Guy Singer. You filled the pool in. You want us senior citizens to come out to a splash park with our walkers and everything else? Is that what you want us to do? We're the ones that paid for this damn city. Yet you took it away from us, gave it to Nayog for 100000 a year when I filed suit to get seven to 800000 a year. Or you could have went to Guy Singer and said, donate the money and do the park in our name. But no, everybody sat down and made, again, more blunders in the mismanagement of this city. But tell the seniors, we have nowhere to go to swim. We gotta go up in Splash Park on West Side and maybe our hair handlers could push us in there our walkers. Thanks. Weston Park is open, or Weston Field is open all year round. Weston Field is the swimming pool at Weston Field, both outdoor and indoor, are open all year round for well, senior citizens. Okay. You gotta remember, this is the city of Scranton, and it has its boundaries in your Flint Splash Parks that are to make it convenient for everybody. Thank you, Mr. Bullis. Like Next on the list, uh, Delmar Guz, I can't read that last name. Delmar Guzevich. Uh, taxpayer, um, I believe yeah, hold, it's, hold, it's, but you're not a resident, right? That you're, is correct. You're I'm a taxpayer. In so, so I'll, here, I'll make you a deal. If I'll, I'll give you your five minutes tonight. Just please, uh, just get to your point, I guess. Uh, thank you for being so polite about it. Um, I believe it's undeniable that the city of Scranton and the entire Wyoming Valley would benefit immensely from reestablishing the Laurel Line. Uh, the Laurel Line, as we know, is the old. Uh, Scranton Wilkes Bear commuter rail service that stretched from Dunmore to Wilkes Bear, and the community desperately needs that to be returned. Um, now, we we just voted, or you guys just voted last week to send a lobbyist down to D.C. in order to get some funds for the the area, which you included as wanting to build the railroad from New York City to uh, Scranton. With those funds, we can also continue to build a much shorter line from Scranton to Wilkes-Barre to alleviate many problems in this community, which include the congestion and pollution of I-81, with over 20,000 Americans dying from emission, auto emissions pollution every year. Uh, we can alleviate that in our community by cutting down the amount of cars we have on 81. Uh, we can make the cities more walkable by having fewer cars. Now, we've just had the past two weeks discussing walkability. I imagine that's been going on further. Some members of Scranton don't even have cars, so getting in and out of the city is difficult with our very limited bus systems, especially as Colts and the LCTA have to work together in order to get that transfer. It's very difficult, as anyone who commutes between Scranton and Wilkes-Barre knows, uh, the bus is not a serious option. Um, additionally, we've had uh, some comments tonight about noise complaints, which railroads will cut down on by reducing the amount of cars on the road. Uh, the number one source of noise pollution for an automobile is rolling resistance, which trains by and large do not have. And it would also help bring people into the city of Scranton for commerce and trade. Uh, creating an economic corridor that we discussed privately last week uh, would help strengthen the entire community and give us a strong financial backbone so that way we can invest more on ourselves and on other members of our community rather than at corporate chains that siphon our finances away and into their own pockets. Now, the, as for what the last guy said about the, commuter, about the communal swimming, the original Laurel Line did have a stop at Nayog Park and it was one of the most important stops on the line for people to visit on the weekends. Uh, revitalizing the Laurel Line will allow people to come and visit the park uh, use its amenities, as well as visit the other uh, faculties in the area, such as the Everhart Museum, small businesses such as the Black Watch Cafe, uh, provides better transportation to people who need to get to the hospital, either for their own uh, needs or as part of employment. I don't know when the last time you guys were up in Neog Park during the day, 
but the amount of cars that are parked there constantly is, is horrifying. Um, at the very least, bringing commuters off the roads onto the rail line will cut down on pollution, improve public safety, improve business opportunities as more people will be walking in the city and thus spending at the small businesses on the streets instead of driving past the city to get to Dixon City, shopping at Target, at Walmart, at these other big box stores that are draining us of our finances. Any questions? I don't have a question, I do have a comment. Yes. Um, so this, I, I don't know if it necessarily was train service, but there was supposed to be a joint uh, Luzerne-Lackawanna County uh, interconnectivity study that Lackawanna County unfortunately backed out of. So a lot of times for the federal money you're talking about, you need some type of study on a shelf to be able to show to get that money back in then. But mm -hmm. I do understand your yeah. point too. Um, additionally, one last comment is that the city of Wilkes-Barre just approved a study to investigate rail service to and from Philadelphia, meaning that both Scranton and Wilkes-Barre, should these projects go through, will have established rail lines and railroad stations um, that could then be easily linked at a significantly lower cost to reestablish the much needed Laurel line. Thank you. Right. Thank you. That exhausts the sign-in sheet. Uh, would anyone else like to address council? Good evening, Council. Dave Dobson, resident. And uh, I'd be a little more polite about the uh, walkability study. But uh, I don't really feel that the streets are wide enough for two-way and bicycles and parking on both sides. We have a few streets that we set aside no parking. And uh, I'm a little concerned about that. Um, it's just uh, changing things around every time, every year, or every couple of years. And uh, I do agree with the 20 mile an hour speed limit in downtown. And I also mentioned in prior city councils years ago, uh, I turn the corner a certain time of year on uh, Lackawanna Avenue when the sun isn't overhead as much at the mall, the main entrance to Boscov's. All of a sudden, there, were, uh, there was a lady in front of me, a pedestrian. And I didn't hit her <laughs> or even come close, but uh, sometimes people might make a mistake and hit the gas pedal instead of the brake. I have pretty large uh, tires on, on me, so uh, I thought of something down in the uh, audience, uh, and Mr. Basaglia could possibly be interested or influenced to put a big solar panel up there to block the sun away and he could take advantage of the electricity that it would generate or, or something like that, anything. But there, there are certain things that were ignored for years and I'm pretty sure there was two or three people killed at that corner you know, over the last 10 or 15 years. So uh, that's something we really need to consider with walkability. And uh, turning to once again, we had a surprise visit. I wish these people that come in here and bash the daylights out of Joe Biden would watch these hearings with the Congress. And uh, there was a witness today that exposed that this was one big conspiracy for January 6th all along. And right out of the president's, former president's mouth was, so what if they hang Mike Pence or something to that order? So if you can see it online or whatever, uh, 
it, it'll be on MSNBC channel 24, Comcast tonight, an analysis of it, it's really concerning. Uh, it just, it's just ungodly. Uh, Mark Meadows wa was the uh, uh, staff supervisor and uh, he sat there playing with the cell phone while people were breaking into the Capitol. Nothing done. Uh, the president was tossing his dinner against the wall, <laughs> taking a fit. You know, it, it's just unbelievable. And these people come in here and how terrible. As far as the fuel costs, things aren't going very good in, in the Ukraine right now. And we had better resolve ourselves because if Mr. Putin blocks off the entire Black Sea border to Ukraine, there's going to be 400 million people in North of Africa and uh, the Mediterranean in starvation mode next year. And that's going to cause even more instability. And he's threatening nuclear war if we don't like it. Okay, they're telling their own citizens, oh, well, if there's nuclear war, we're all Orthodox Christians and we'll die and go to heaven. Well, gee, Mr. Putin, I think it'd be better if you died, but we can't hope for gifts uh, like that. And uh, uh, it's just entirely ridiculous. I mean, I didn't really agree with it, but uh, as far as I'm concerned, Joe Biden is about 350 times better than what we had. Thank you and have a good night. Thank you, Mr. Dobson. Would anyone else like to address council? Thank you. Uh, good evening, Marie Schumacher. Uh, who on the council is representing us in the county's reassessment effort? No one at the moment. Pardon? No one at the moment. I, I don't see where we would fit into that process on council. Boy, I, I could, but maybe I'll do that next week. Um, and um, Mr. Schuster, how much is left in the, this first tranche of the uh, rescue money? I'm not sure how much is left in it. Um, what we were given was an outline, so I don't know what has actually been spent at this point in time. I don't think has any of it been spent. I, all I know is we should be getting a report within the next couple of weeks. Prepared by whom? By the ARPA director. By the who? I'm sorry. By the director of the program. Okay. I certainly think you should be there. I noticed in the, in the earlier ones, it wasn't even mentioned that they took 5.5 right off the top for the budget this year. So I think you should at least ask for regular, and I mean short inter intervals on where we're they're gonna spending. We're going to get quarterly, we're going to get quarterly reports. Oh, that's, that's not enough. They could have it spent by by then. And I th would like to see also, I, if you have it, is what their priority is for whatever the balance is and spending that. Um, I think that's imperative that we find out, you know, where they've allocated it and make sure that it doesn't get switched out. Um, regarding the audit, I know, quick change here, but has anybody ever talked to the two committees that have, that operate on a different fiscal year that are always the holdup for the audit being done on time? Has anybody ever asked so, those two to, to change to the same fiscal year as the rest of the city? I don't know what that process would look like, and but I do know that the sewer authority and the parking authority were on the 
the June um, list and not the one for August on what the auditor needed. So we'll see if we're going to get an update this week June to see parking? if parking really so we we got an update from the auditor they said they needed certain things by the end of june and then yeah. certain things by the beginning of august and parking and sewer i believe were both on the june list so we're hope we're hopeful to get an update this week on whether the auditor received those items uh, okay uh now last night at the uh, walkability uh, meeting which i did attend they talked about uh, a bike study that has already been done by the city. Has that ever been in the third order? I don't remember ever seeing a bike study. That was supposed to be a part of the connectivity plan with Lackawanna and Luzerne counties that never took place. But I don't remember this, at least on my but, time on Council of the City, well, actually. Yeah, because I mean, they, they said that last night. You know, well, the city's already got their bike plan. I would love to see that too, if you could try to get a copy of that. Um, and it's been a long time since Grant and Tomorrow's been here. They're coming in July 19th. We July who? July 19th, Grant and Tomorrow's coming in. And in the past we were told it was quarterly, I believe. Uh, is that we're gonna be quarterly moving forward, yes. Okay. Okay, now. Um, the split of the property tax payers and t uh, tax exempt ta uh, uh, companies, for lack of a better term, has that anybody checked on what that split is right currently? On on who pay actually pays taxes and then the tax exempt, I believe it's thirty seven percent. But I'll get a number for you for next week yeah well it, it, it usually varies there but i would like to know what it is now thank you thank you would anyone else like to address council tom coin manuka i watched the uh, reassessment meeting with the county commissioners and the introduction session on it and I was thoroughly unimpressed and unfortunately I was not there to bring up the question. One of the points that they brought up is to bring this assessment into place is they are going to use a 30-month rolling comps, meaning going back for comparable sales of properties in the last 30 months. That's all well and good, but the comps that they are getting are unnaturally inflated because a hyper low interest rate. That's not the case anymore and that will not be the case. There is no way for them to draw when pulling comps, non-sales because houses aren't selling because the interest rate is going up to four, five, six, six percent. You cannot build, you cannot pull a comp that says property values have fallen because the data won't be there because you're pulling it from house sales. I have an issue with that formula. Tonight was brought up the home rule charter. I brought it up beforehand and my main concern with it at this point is the lack of teeth in the home rule charter. If there is misconduct, if there is any issues within the city that are brought to question. The ethics board is there, but there is no real teeth to stop it immediately and put it forward without a six to nine month review by the ethics board before they come to a decision about what they might, might do or might, or might not want to do. The home rule charter should have penalties in there for bad behavior. It should be if you violate the office, if you violate the oath, if you violate the trust of the city, you're removed. Not, we'll go through committees and we'll think about it or we'll talk about it or we'll look into it. If evidence is proven, your job should be forfeit. And unfortunately, the Home Rule Charter does not have teeth built into it as an enforcement mechanism 
to say that if this happens, there are these penalties. That's a part of the Home Rule Charter that I think is lacking. I would like to thank Sheets Gas Station. This week they have lowered gas to $3.99 a gallon and $3.49 a gallon for flex fuel at their stations. This is going through the, this is going through the 4th of July holiday and unlike other stations that have stayed incredibly high, this station also provides free air for tires. I'd like to thank them for taking the small hit of reducing gas prices in this time of the holiday season for the population in this area. And last, uh, when the gentleman came from Wilkesbury came before us to speak, it was, it was questioned whether or not he had the right to speak before here, and he was allowed to speak this time. Rules of this body, Article 5, Section 1, Regulations of Council, specifically state in them that they follow the sunshine rule. The sunshine, and they actually quote the chapters. The chapter in particular is 710.1 for public participation. Residents of the political subdivision or of the authority created by a political subdivision or for taxpayers of the political subdivision get to speak before this body. If he works here, he pays city tax. If he pays city tax, he has the right by law to speak before this body. To stop him from doing so and interfering it is a violation of the Sunshine Rule. That's part of Council's direct articles and of the Sunshine Law. And I thank you for allowing him to speak today because he really did have some interesting information. Thank you. Would anyone else like to address Council? Good evening, Council. Darwin Shaw, city, um, city resident. Um, let's get straight, straight to the top so I can work my way down. There has been a law passed, let's say, Roe versus Wade, you would say, and it is, um, it stripped women of their rights. Um, I am, I am for, I am a pro-life individual. I am, and I do believe that life form starts in conception. I do. But I am not okay with being a father of a number amount of females, knowing a number amount of females, even having a beautiful fiance, being forced, if anything tragic to happens to her, tragic that happens to her, to have a child that is mentally going to destroy not only the child, but the system itself. If we go back, let's say 50 years, when women came so far um, and fighting for their rights, that's one. So I would like Mr. Donahue, um, when you do get up to the state level, because that is a state problem that you can do something, I do stand for pro-life, but do something for the women so they do not lose their rights. Um, as, as females, they, they deserve to, to get treated with respect uh, alone, contending in, in a market with men that they're not getting paid equally. Number two, I like the gentleman's comments that he did say, and he does have the right to speak due to him paying taxes, but those comments pertaining to the railroads are most likely utilized in the commission's office when it comes to the trail line. If you want to speak to somebody, uh, I think Jim Natariani is the uh, individual that you should talk to. He's the one who, who does, he loves trains. Um, and the commissioners, they will help you. And honestly, if you do speak to the council member, please, please be polite to my friends, you know, because they, they do work hard. Um, number three, flood mitigation. No, not flood mitigation. Um, the mayor is 3D. Uh, the mayor is sending correspondence, I guess, to rework the organization between the, DP, the public worker management system. Could we please investigate Chris, uh, what is his name? I'm sorry, I wrote it down. Jenkins, Mr. Jenkins, not only for uh, mismanagement of funds, but 
taking a truck off the line when it pushed garbage back. I would like to know when a Rubicon is coming in to, to, to be held accountable for their actions of, of sending our city back a couple of days, sending our garbage back a couple of weeks, and putting more strain on our trucks in the system and you individuals. Um, other one would be the pools. Is there any plans or any ideas to what what is going to be done with the pool and not McDade? Uh, yeah, McDade Park. Is McDade right? Park's a county pool. It's a county pool. N Na Naog, we're going to have a couple more meetings over the next few weeks before we come back for thank a public you. presentation. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So that's wonderful. That that is, that's a big project. So you know there there has to be a lot of sit downs with that. But that is that is progress, you know, and it will get done. Um, yeah, flood mitigation, um, we would just go to there. No, not even flood mitigation. When it comes to the walkability, uh, that nonsense, let's just call it, uh, fixing our sidewalks, is there a proper way that we can take the money from the liquid fuels account to not only pave the roads, but also spruce up the sidewalks? Because downtown, I remember as a child, they used to they used to sparkle a little bit. It used to be really, really nice. You know, it, it is more expensive material to, to use, but I'm pretty sure if they sit down and they come up with a realistic budget that is honestly surplus and not just balanced and presented to council properly, you guys have no problem investing in something that will not only bring revenue to, to Scranton, but also attract individuals to, to feel comfortable to walk around and enjoy the city. Um, and then it will, it will help with blight, I, I believe, but that is another issue to deal with on top of all these other problems. Um, what else? The schools, if, if, who would I have to talk to about getting the steps at McNichols Plaza fixed? Because there's a lot of children that, that use that, those, those stairs, let's say, and if one of them fall, I don't know who's liable of, of a lawsuit, because that is, that's a big problem. I can't even walk down them stairs, honestly, nor walk safely in the street when I tried to step off the sidewalk so individuals could walk past with their families. It is, it is dangerous, along with the bridge that is over there. I don't know, I don't know the street, but if we're gonna do a, a walkability study of downtown square and at least can we utilize the safety areas where children go to school thank, and I don't want to take thank time. you Mr. Uh, for the steps that would probably be the director of operations for the school district and in terms of South Webster Avenue um, yeah. I actually had a conversation with Eileen Cipriani today and we're working on uh, getting that going uh, the bridge is actually structurally sound there yeah. it's just the sidewalks that were added to the bridge yeah. have are sort of eroded but that fix will be Put out the bid shortly, I believe. Would anyone else like to address council? Mr. Voldenberg? Fifth order, 5A motions. Mr. King, do you have any motions or comments? Uh, nothing at this time. I know I mentioned about, I did. I did mention about that uh, there was gonna be a movie up at Robinson Park. That's actually in July. Um, I believe it's mid-July, maybe July 16th, so I'll try to get some more information on that. But it's the first time they're doing something like that, an outdoor uh, movie for families. I think that'll be pretty nice for families up in the East Mountain. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Schuster, <coughs> do you have any motions or comments? Just, I guess just a few comments um, <clears> or <throat> questions to Mr. Boldenberg. Last week we put out a couple um, correspondence over to the administration um, looking for schedules for the land bank properties also the drainage basins and street sweepers I did see that we got a the basin a, an answer on the basins from American water we is did it, sir yeah is it possible that we could send that over to DPW as well to see if the lines on the city end if there's a maintenance schedule for those those basins I will all right thank you um, also Rubicon, did we hear anything on the request to have Rubicon come in or any of the questions answered from the administration on Rubicon? Nothing as of this afternoon, sir. Okay. Um, I do have a couple addresses which I sent over earlier in the day. Um, three addresses over on Quin in 900 of Quincy Avenue, one on Hawthorne Street, um, 10th Avenue and Garfield. So uh, I'll just follow up with you later on those, but you have those. I have them, sir. All right. Um, that's all for today. 
Dr. Rothschild, do you have any motions or comments? Uh, yes, just a few comments. Um, I, I hadn't mentioned earlier, but I did want to make sure to point out that the CDC has now uh, approved COVID vaccines uh, for children ages six months through five years. So there are two that are approved. There's a Pfizer and Moderna. The Pfizer is a, a three-dose uh, injection, and then the Moderna is uh, includes two doses. That would be four to eight weeks apart. And um, you could contact the pediatrician or physician offices for those vaccines. And part of why I wore my mask for so long was because of my, my daughter at home, uh, who's 15 months old, and she was finally able to receive her first vaccination dosage. So um, I feel a bit better about that now. Um, the other thing that I want to bring up, I know uh, many people during citizens' participation talked about the walkability study uh, and the presentation that took place last night. Unfortunately, I was not able to be there. I will catch up with it because I know it was on ECTV. Um, but I'm I'm personally excited about improving the walkability of our of our city and downtown. Uh, I know that it could seem like we're more focused on downtown, but just because we have some efforts downtown does not mean that the other neighborhoods are, are excluded from, from our efforts. And um, I, I think that we need to have a successful and a busy downtown uh, to ensure the success of the, of the whole city. And we've been working towards that over the years. Uh, there's still improvement that needs to happen I know when, when I'm down there for First Friday, the amount of pedestrians that are around, the feel of the city, I want to I wanna see that every weekend, not just on First Fridays during the summer. Uh, and I, I don't see why people would not be interested in that as well. I am in total agreement that we, we need to address the sidewalks throughout the city. And I've been working with the administration and have ongoing conversations on how we could do that because that is going to be a very large scale project. I know I've looked at replacing my sidewalks in the front of my property before and I've been quoted at least $2,000 for um, really a small amount of space. So if you're uh, paving or if you're taking care of sidewalks on an entire block, uh, that's going to be thousands and thousands of dollars. and it's, it's a prevalent issue throughout the whole city uh, and in many neighborhoods. So then, um, you know, how do we approach it? Do we, it, if we take care of one neighborhood at a time, that's, that's gonna be an issue for people uh, because then it's, you know, why are we focusing on Southside and not North Scranton? Um, so looking at like a larger program uh, and, and what's going to be most impactful for our city to increase the, the walkability and the amount of pedestrians because I, I know I would like to be able to use the sidewalks more uh, and that's uh, I think very important issue for us to address uh, and I'm going to continue to explore what options we, we have for doing that in the city. Uh, that's all, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mr. McAndrew, do you have any motions or comments? Yeah, I do, so can you hear me? Yes. Great, okay, so. Last year, a concern was brought to me by a resident. It was about a missing city-owned power washer. I inquired about it. I received some flack about it. And then it miraculously appeared two to three days later back in the TV So let's fast forward a year. So right now, uh, the same concern was brought to me by the innocent residents. It's the missing power washer again. All right, so. Somebody owns two power washers. Single tank uh, that is over at Western Field and is used for parts. And then there's a second power washer. It's a dual tank power washer. Uh, that one went missing last year and it went missing again this year. And it's supposed to be stored in the basin shop at the DPW. Right, so my, I'm being told now it's missing for a couple of months. All right, so can you still hear me? Yes. So over the past weekend, uh, and even today, I've been receiving timestamp pictures and texts that uh, this power washer is mine, but it's not a it's not a deep dump. All right. Uh, and like I said, this has been brought up to me again by concerned citizens. It's 
it, I'm being told that it's being used by a BBW worker for private use. You know, so, and and these pictures show the power washer on a tra- on a trailer uh, and attached to a personal vehicle at the residence uh, of a DPW worker. So um, I'm also told that this piece of equipment has a usage counter. And I was told that this piece of equipment has never been used by DPW, just the other single tank um, power washer. So with all this said, I'm, you know, last year I didn't accuse anybody, but I looked into it. That's, what, that's part of my role as a councilman is, is to check out and look into concerns by taxpayers. So I'm doing the same this year. I'm not accusing anybody of anything. I don't know. You know, this, this person can own it or not, but it's just, with that said, I want to make a motion. The reason I'm making a motion is, is because this is a reoccurrence. So my motion is, um, I would like to make a motion to have administration uh, conduct an investigation into this matter so we can have definitive answers. All right, there's a motion, I mean, there's a motion on the floor uh, made by Mr. McAndrew. Is there a second? I'll second. On the question? On the question? On the question. I'll, I'll, excuse me, I'm sorry, Kyle. On the question, I mean, I have all these pictures. I have all this backup information. I will send it to help, you know, with the administration to conduct this investigation. And let's just clear it up. Let's finally find out what uh, what's going on here. So we're just to clarify on the question, too, uh, we're just asking we're, we're requesting that they conduct an, an investigation yes okay just wanted to clarify that um on behalf of the residents this yeah is, this oh is, no i just wanted to clarify that we're requesting and yes cause we, i'm sorry yeah we can't technically force them to do anything um no, I, i'm requesting i'm asking the question anyone else on the question all those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye aye aye, aye. aye. opposed the ayes have it, so moved. Okay, and then secondly, so um, this is due to the horrific crimes uh, over the past couple weeks in the city. You know, everybody knows about it, everybody's talking about it. I'm afraid for my daughters and grandchildren. I'm afraid for all of your children and grandchildren uh, of, of you guys on council and, and, and our residents. So uh, Gangs are here. I remember a couple of years ago, maybe 10, 15 years ago, you know, there was a lot of activity or so-called gang activity. And we were told by, you know, these are just wannabe gang members. There were a couple knuckleheads in the neighborhoods, but that no longer exists. This, this is real gang activity. Um, so with that said, you know, and I know that there was an article in the paper, a podcast conducted by the Times with Chief Carroll, which I, I'll be honest with you, I didn't get to see it yet. Um, but, and, and I know that most residents probably don't have the ability to do that, you know, cause it's a link in the times. And if they don't, you know, go online and read the times. So with that said, and because of, you know, um, the increase in crime, I would, I would, Mr. Boulderberg, if you could request chief Carroll and the mayor, uh, to come into us, provide us with, you know, statistics, updated crime statistics in the city, um, and you know he can talk to the podcast that, that he already did, but I'd like to see a strategy from both of them uh, because of the increase in, in, in gang activity and what moving forward, what we're going to do about it. Uh, provide you know a safe city for all of us. Would you do that, Mr. Voldenberg? I will. I'll reach out to both, Mr. McAndrew. Thank you. And also, Mr. Voldenberg, I have you here. I've been asking about Rubicon data for three, four weeks now. Um, it's a simple request. I know that technically we don't have a Rubicon person on, on staff, but uh, this information should be collected uh, or this data should be collected because it's used to reroute trucks and it's supposed to provide us with all these savings. I, uh, please reach out again. Maybe they didn't get the, get the message, but I, I still want to know where uh, any savings have been had with, with this system. And uh, please reach out again. What else can I say? I'll follow up again, sir. Thank you, and that's all I have right now. Thank you. Um, I got nothing at this time, Mr. Voldemort. 
5B for introduction and ordinance authorizing the mayor and other appropriate officials of the city of Scranton to take all necessary actions to implement the HUD 2022 annual action plan for community planning and development programs to be funded under the community development block grant program home investment partnership program and emergency solutions grant program for the period beginning January 1st 2022. At this time, I'll entertain a motion that item 5B be introduced into its proper committee. So moved. Second. On the question, all those in favor of your introduction signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? <coughs> the ayes have it and so moved. Sixth order, 6A. Reading by title, file the council number 15, 2022, amending an ordinance entitled Approving the intermunicipal transfer of a res restaurant liquor license, R15376, currently owned by the estate of George Cherkin, Wanda C. Cherkin, Administrator, 326 Hill Street, Jessup, Lackawanna County, Pennsylvania, 18434, to Clarkies, located 850 Providence Road, Scranton, Lackawanna County, Pennsylvania, 18508, as required by the Pennsylvania Liquor Control Board per the specification required by the Pennsylvania Liquor Control Board and to reflect the correct legal name of Clarkies as Clarkies Billiards LLC. You've heard reading by title of item 6A. What is your pleasure? Mr. Chairman, I move that item 6A pass reading by title. Second. On the question. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it and so moved. Seventh order, 7A, for consideration by the Committee on Public Works for adoption, file the council number 14, 2022, establishing a no parking zone along the easterly side of Pittston Avenue, State Route 3023, beginning 100 feet from the northerly curb line of Beach Street and continuing for a distance of 65 feet to allow for safe site distance for a proposed driveway at 819 Pittston Avenue. What is the recommendation of the chairperson for the Committee on Public Works? As chairperson for the Committee on Public Works, I recommend final passage of 7A. Second. On the question. Roll call, please. Mr. King? Yes. Mr. Schuster? Yes. Dr. Rothschild? Yes. Mr. McAndrew? Yes. Mr. Dunningham? Yes. I hereby declare item 7A legally and lawfully adopted. 7B, for consideration by the Committee on Public Works for adoption, resolution number 95, 2022, ratifying and improving the execution and submission of the grant application by the City of Scranton to the Federal Emergency Management Agency for up to $7,200,132.16 to be used toward the Kaiser Avenue stormwater and pump station. What is the recommendation of the chairperson for the Committee on Public Works? As chairperson for the Committee on Public Works, I recommend final passage of 7B. Second. On the question. <clears throat> Roll call, please. Mr. King? Yes. Mr. Schuster? Yes. Dr. Rothschild? Yes. Mr. McAndrew? Yes. Mr. Dunningham? Yes. I hereby declare item 7B legally and lawfully adopted. 7C, for consideration by the Committee on Community Development for adoption, resolution number 96, 2022. Ratifying and approving the execution and submission of the grant application by the City of Scranton to the U.S. Department of the Interior's Outdoor Recreation Legacy Partnership Program for up to $381,594 to be used towards the revitalization of Connell Park in South Scranton. What is the recommendation of the chairperson for the Committee on Community Development? As chairperson for the Committee on Community De Development, I recommend final passage of item 7C. Second. Second. On the question. Roll call, please. Mr. King? Yes. Mr. Schuster? Yes. Dr. Rothschild? Yes. Mr. McAndrew? Yes. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Mr. Dunningham? Yes. I hereby declare item 7C legally and lawfully adopted. Eighth Order 8A, file the Council Number 9, 2022. This piece of legislation is the updated zoning ordinance. It is tabled to allow for additional amendments, input, and any changes. If there's no further business, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion, motion to, to adjourn. adjourn. Thank motion you. Motion to adjourn.
Thank you.